survival crafting games. They're an interesting bunch. In many ways, there is a huge variety of titles in which to build your base, terraform, dig, mine, plant, farm and otherwise inhabit a world, and yet, in other ways, you've played one survival crafting game, you've played them all. That's not to poo-poo the genre, not at all. I enjoy my survival crafting games, and have spent many, many happy hours carving out a life for myself in some far-off virtual landscape. But since the basic mechanics of human survival, food, shelter and warmth haven't really changed much in the last ooh, six million years, it's a difficult genre to be innovative in. Until we reach better than life levels of simulation, there's a reference for you. Despite this, we've had a slew of survival crafting games over the last decade, of which Lens Island from indie developer Flow Studios is the latest. Released for early access on the 26th of November 2021 for £19.49, Lens Island is an isometric survival crafting game with a very stylistic graphical appearance. It reminds me of Kentucky Route Zero, actually, which I mean as a compliment. You play as the titular Len as they are washed upon the titular island and have to find a way to survive. If you've played a survival crafting game before, or specifically if you've played Don't Starve and or Medieval Engineers before, you'll feel right at home. The usual mechanics are there, hunger, the need for shelter, not being able to sleep unless you actually have a bed because camping under the stars isn't a thing survivalists do, and they are all implemented pretty well. The building mechanics are remarkably similar, albeit a tad less complicated, to those in Medieval Engineers. Even the structures look heavily influenced in appearance and design, but that just means that they are good and they work and the progression system is fairly well balanced and you feel like you're putting work into the game without grinding for long periods. The harvesting mechanics feel very much like those in most other survival crafting games, hit something until it breaks apart into many useful smaller things, and the addition of a critical hit mechanic only serves to enhance this fairly solid and well understood system. It's meant, of course, to help improve your combat prowess, but it can also hasten your collection of resources if you manage to nail the timing. And that links up pretty well to the combat and controls in general. The combat is fine, a little frenetic, and I never quite seem to be able to time a block, but then that could very easily be me and not the responsiveness of the controls, but it's serviceable and well implemented. The combat is also, it has to be said, largely optional. The lack of overland predators makes for a relatively safe experience, so unless you actually decide to delve deeper into the dark places, you'll probably manage to survive for quite a long time. Now, that being said, the caves and subterranean levels are very nicely done. In fact, the design of this game in general is pretty nice, with a beautiful soundtrack complementing the stylistic graphics and making even the more hair-raising moments an enjoyable experience. The game comes with two slightly differing control modes, a mouse-based system and the standard WASD. The developers, for some reason that I can't fathom, recommend that you use the mouse mode, but I personally found this clunky, cumbersome, slow and generally frustrating. The WASD mode felt much more natural, although it does pose its own challenges when being used in an isometric world. I haven't had the chance to try the game with a controller yet, but my gut instinct is that it will improve matters when it is made available. As you go further into the game, you can open up new areas of the world around you. These give a few new options to players. If you don't want your house to be overrun with heavy machinery, for example, you can take your supplies across the bridge into town and trade with the folks you meet and get some new items that way. And they also hint at the deeper, darker underbelly of this outwardly charming title. Because, for my money, you can play Lens Island in one of three ways. You can play it as a swashbuckling adventurer who is intent on exploring every corner of the island and discovering the secrets hidden in the dark recesses of the world. You can play as a simple farmer or craftsman, just trying to make their way in the world and keep food on the table. Or you can play it as a mixture of both. And if you're like me, which play mode you opt for will entirely depend upon your mood on any given day. And staying true to the survival crafting genre, Lens Island will always have something for you to do to suit your mood. Add to that that it's a genuine nuts and bolts grassroots indie game. The entirety of Flow Studios is two developers from Brisbane, Australia with help from a Norwegian and a German. Lens Island is a good, solid offering that has more than enough about it to survive out there in the big, wide world. 6 out of 10. I've been Chris for Invicta Magazine and thank you for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed it please do give this video a like and a share. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and keep up with all our latest content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter plus we stream regularly on Twitch and you can find all those links in the description below along with our website. See you next time. Goodbye for now.